In this week's video, we're going to continue working on this Lenovo IdeaPad 5. Now, during the week, I contacted the original seller to see if she could provide me with any more information that might help me to fix this laptop. She said there was no spill, there was no drop or any physical damage to the laptop. She basically just went to turn it on one morning and nothing happened. Now, what she also told me was she dropped it into a computer shop. They had it for a period of almost four months and when she got it back from them it still was not working and that's when I purchased it from her. It's always disappointing to learn that a laptop that I've purchased secondhand for repair has already been with another computer store as this dramatically reduces the opportunity for me to get a repair. If it's given back to the owner it's usually because the computer shop determines that it's not repairable. However even though the opportunity for repair might be limited we always have the opportunity to learn. You might remember in last week's video, we put together a checklist of all of the steps to take when we have a power on no display symptom. We went through a number of those steps, but unfortunately we didn't get a resolution to the issue. Now during the week, while I was searching for bias dumps to try with the bias ICs on this motherboard, my mind wandered back to the results of the terminal camera scan. Now you might remember when we scanned this motherboard with the laptop powered on and all of the voltage rails online, we could see this section here was heating up. However, our CPU was not heating up. So I thought it might be a good idea to check each of these MOSFETs that are around the CPU power rails and just confirm that there's no short on any of those. Now as you can see, there's a lot of components bunched around that CPU, so it's actually difficult for me to try and clearly show you what measurements I'm taking. So what I've decided to do is draw a sort of partial schematic for each of those voltage rails. So we have our first VCC in rail, we have our second one, and we have our third one for the auxiliary power. So let's start at the top with our first VCC in. So as you can see, we have our V-Sys power rail comes into the drain of our high side MOSFET. Our high side MOSFET is a PK6D0BA N-channel MOSFET. The low side MOSFET is a 4513NH N-channel MOSFET. And the source pins of this MOSFET are connected to ground. Now these MOSFETs are switched on and off at high frequency to generate our output power rail which goes through our PL3401 and is labelled VCC in and as we saw on last week's video this measures 1.8 volts. Modern generation CPUs have very low resistance so that can interfere with the measurements we're trying to take of these MOSFETs. So what I decided to do was remove the inductor which basically disconnects the CPU now we can take measurements on these two MOSFETs without being concerned that we are getting incorrect measurements. We will use diode mode to take measurements from these MOSFETs. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect all power. So I remove the battery and the power supply so that we have no voltage going to those MOSFETs. I introduce my multimeter in diode mode and placing my black probe to the drain pin and my red probe to the source pin, I find that we measure 0 0.520. When I measure between gate and drain, it measures OL, so there's no short gate to drain. And lastly, measuring gate to source, we also find that it measures OL, so there's no short between the gate and the source pins either. So our high side MOSFET PQ3403 is certainly not shorted. Let's move on to our low side MOSFET PQ3405. Once again in diode mode with all power switched off, I connect my black probe to the drain pin and I connect my red probe to the source pin and I find it measures 0 0.520. Next I took a measurement between the gate pin and the drain pins and I found that it measured OL, so there's no short from gate to drain. And lastly, measuring gate to source, I find that it also measures OL. So we have no short between gate and source on the lower MOSFET either. So to conclude on this section, we've established that neither PQ3403 
or PQ3405 are shorted. Both of these look fine. I soldered the inductor back onto the motherboard and moved down to the second VCC in power rail. The measurements that I took for these were exactly the same as for the first VCC in power rail, so neither of these MOSFETs were shorted. And lastly, for the VCC in auxiliary power rail, I took the same measurements for this. The measurements for this were slightly different to the VCC in power rails, but neither of these MOSFETs are shorted either. So at this point I have confirmed that even though these MOSFETs are showing up as the hotspots on my thermal camera, none of them are actually shorted. They are actually just getting warm because they're carrying current to the CPU. I'm sure you've all seen the videos on YouTube, particularly with gaming laptops, where the technician approaches the motherboard with the thermal camera, immediately spots that one of the MOSFETs or voltage regulation modules on the CPU or GPU power rail is showing as really really hot they determine it to be shorted and then replace it and then that gets the laptop back working again but that's not the scenario here these mosfets are showing up as warm with my thermal camera but they're not actually shorted i feel like i've just wasted hours drawing out all of those partial schematics for nothing but hopefully we will get to use them on future videos. The question is now where do we go from here? I'm curious as to why the previous computer store stopped working on this. Did they observe that all of the power rails had come online and just immediately diagnose that there's a problem with either the CPU or the chipset that cannot be resolved? Is that your reading of it as well? Please post in the comments below. I think what I'm going to try and do is maybe get a few bias dumps, flash the bias ICs on this just for practice and see where we take it from there. And this is the detail of the actual laptop motherboard that I'm working on, including the serial number. If you have a working bias or you know where I can download a working bias for this laptop, please post down in the comments below. And of course, if you think I'm just wasting my time with the bias, if you feel that it's something that's just not repairable, then please post that in the comments down below as well.